Hey everybody, guess what? It's Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you have a day filled with love and happiness and treats and kindness. Um, I am gonna do some seed starting today because you know what? Online, apparently, everybody's doing their seed starting, so it's like a party out there. So I wanted to join the seed starting party. So I went through my pile of seeds and I, um, well, first I went to my calendar that I had laid out and I said where I put the, you know, the recommended dates and stuff. And it said there that Foxglove, Godfrina, and uh, Snapdragons could all be started inside right now. Now I did do Foxglove and Snapdragons in my winter sewing already. So they're out on the picnic table, just chilling out, waiting for spring to come but I wanted to try some inside as well. And then actually in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna try a third method of sewing foxgloves and snapdragons. And we're gonna kind of run a test and see which one works the best. But for today, we're just gonna do some indoor seed starting in, you know, just traditional soil with, you know, uh, trays and, and stuff. And we'll see if we can rig up some lights, figure something out like that. But then I went through my packet, my, um, my bucket and I read the backs and said, which ones of them can be started six to eight weeks before the la average last frost date. Our average last frost date here in Baltimore, Maryland is April 11th. Now that means that there's a 50% chance that there will be frost after that. So um, if you wanna be guaranteed of kind of having no frost, you wanna look on the charts and see what your 10% chance of frost is. All right, so that's not a guarantee either, but that date is much later. For me, that's mid-May. I'm gonna go with April 11th as my average last frost date, which means eight weeks before that is right now. Yay! So if the packet said eight weeks before, I'm gonna go ahead and try some in a tray. And if it said six weeks before, yeah, I'm gonna try some anyway. It, what have I got to lose? It's a little bit of dirt. I already have the seeds. It's Just give it a shot, and I might learn something along the way. I wanted to show you what I got. Um, this came on the recommendation of Laura at Garden Answer. Um, and so you might already guess what it is, but it's a package from Gardener, Garden, what is it? Gardener Supply. And it contains four of these Grow Ease starter kits. It contains the cell packs, the water reservoir, the wicking, um, mat and a dome to cover it and so I'm giving these a shot these were somewhat you know not inexpensive and I ordered them in mid January and they just got here last week because they were back ordered but they're here now I'm trying to remember how much they cost I think they were I want to say they were like $40 each for these kits so it's an investment and um, if they work really well I might do get some more of them for the future, but for now, four is plenty to start with. I'm also gonna be using this kind of much less expensive um, seed starting kit. This is the Pro Hex. You can also get these even less fancy than this. This has a hex shaped side, which is supposed to do something to help the roots grow down and not um, stay root bound. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything. This also has a water reservoir tray and a dome. Um, but it does not have the self-watering uh, wicking mat in it. Got this at the big box store. I think this costs about $8 if I remember correctly. And finally, I'm going to be using some of these styrofoam trays. These are the things that my meat comes in from the grocery store. So chicken, ground beef, pork chops, whatever. I save them, wash them out, and I can use some of these. Now, if you use these, you have to move your seedlings up to a different pot after you get them sprouted in these. These can't stay here. But I think, especially on this deeper one, I'm gonna try growing some microgreens in this because microgreens, you only grow to be about that tall and then you cut them off and use them in salads or on sandwiches and stuff. So they don't really need a really deep root system. So I think microgreens are going to be Not sure about the other ones. We're gonna kind of play it by ear. Okay, let's talk about soil. I'm using the Jiffy Seed Starting Mix. Um, in my last video, when I did the winter sowing, I had miracle Grow kind and I had the Jiffy kind. 
I really like the Jiffy better because it didn't have any big chunks of anything in it. And so I like that better for the tender roots to be able to go um, throughout the soil without running into an obstacle. Also, the miracle Grow has fertilizer in it and seeds don't really need fertilizer in their first two weeks. They're just too busy breaking their dormancy and opening up that uh, seed coat. And um, as far as I understand it, the seed coat contains the nutrients that the seed needs to get its first two weeks of growth going. Only at that point, after they're two weeks old, do you really need to be thinking about fertilizing. So the miracle Grow stuff, you might think it saves a step, but it actually just adds cost and it wasn't very fine. And so I think I like this better. This is the only one other one that I've tried this season. I haven't tried the one that you can get at the dollar store. And I also haven't tried any other brands. Um, you just want to experiment and see what you like the best. And time will tell, your seeds will tell you if they like their soil or not. I'm hoping they like this one. So I'm just gonna dump it in my bucket and get it pre-moistened so that I don't have to water in the seeds too deeply in the seed trays. Okay, so I took the seed starter kit out of its packaging and the instructions for how to use it are on the back. Now I've seen a lot of Laura's videos over on Garden Answer about how she uses these. So I'm kind of just mimicking what she does a little bit, right? Learn from the best, right? That's all we can do. And again, I am still learning how to do all of this. So we're just kind of running some experiments here. So it comes like this, it's got all these materials. So this is the little support stand that you'll use in a minute. Here are the 24 cells. These are um, bigger than the kind that you get in a six pack at the um, garden center. Um, these I would say are an inch and a half or two inches square. There are 24 of them. It also comes with the, uh, the tray that holds the water and then a dome. And then finally, this is the all important wicking capillary mat. So the way this goes together is you put the support stand into the water tray like that. You get when you're ready to have your plants um, being self-watered, you would get this wet all the way through. Then you lay it in here with the black side up and you can see that this is longer than the tray. And so what you do is you tuck this end down into the bottom so that it is touching the bottom along the side here. And then what happens is when you fill this tray up with water, you're gonna fill it up just underneath this support system here. And this end that's in the water will wick that water up and it'll spread all the way across this mat and the mat will stay wet as long as there's water in the bottom. So then what happens is you have your plants in here in their soil. And if the soil is nice and firmly touching the bottom of the cell, then when you set the tray on the mat, then the soil touches the mat through those holes. And so then the water comes up from the bottom onto the mat and then up into the soil and the roots of the plant can grow down to reach the water and you don't have to disturb your seeds as you're starting to plant them. And really it encourages those roots to grow downward instead of languishing up near the top of the soil. So really, and, and then also you can use this while you're germinating, but when, after your seeds have germinated, you take the dome off. And so then you don't really have to worry about your seeds, your seedlings drying out after they've, after they've sprouted. You can um, check on them once a day or so, make sure there's water in that reservoir, and then go on about your business. So that's how the self-watering trays work. So I'm going to not use the mat right away though, because until they've germinated, I don't really need to be worrying about the water. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna be setting that part of it aside. I'm just gonna be setting them down in there like that. And I will be covering them so that they maintain moisture until they germinate. As Soon as they germinate, the dome comes off and this support goes in and the mat goes in and we're ready to go. I've got my soil pre-moistened. I'm gonna fill up my tray with soil. I really love this green tidy tray thing. It um, really does keep the dirt kind of all contained instead of getting all over my kitchen. I don't know if you guys can see, but so the soil is moist enough so that it holds together, but it doesn't, water doesn't drip out when you squeeze it tight. 
And this Jiffy brand doesn't have any chunks of anything in it, so I really like that. It's really a fine, fine particle mix. Not packing it, but just make sure there's soil all the way through, all the way down. And the other thing is you need that soil to be really touching the bottom so that it can reach that capillary mat. All right, very good. Okay, so I have, I have 20 seeds of Gomfrina. This is the Las Vegas mix. I have never grown these before, and so I really don't know how they're gonna do. I have 20 seeds of this, and so I'm gonna do 10 of these cells with two seeds each. One trick that I saw online is if you have tiny seeds that there you have very few of them and they kind of are precious to you, you can use a toothpick to plant them. And so you just wet the end of the toothpick and then the seed will stick to the toothpick and you can place it exactly where you want. So we'll give that a shot. Kind of setting them in here a little bit apart from each other so that they don't disturb each other when because I might be able instead of thinning them out and losing half of them I might be able to prick them out and pot them on so I'm going to try to separate them enough in these trays so that their roots don't get all bound up in each other so you can see the two there's one and there's one in each of these cells, I have two of them. They kind of look like um, sesame seeds a little bit. I need to make sure to label my plants. So I'm gonna write on here uh, that I did two per cell times 10 cells. And I'm gonna put today's date on the back. A little hard since it's Valentine's Day. That is one. So now I have 14 more cells in here that I could do. I'm going to do next, I'm going to do some foxglove seeds that I had from, that I collected from the plant that I had in my garden last year. And these are tiny. They're smaller than sand. These are some of the smallest seeds I've ever seen. They are like dust. So I'm just going to um, sprinkle them, put some in there. I'm getting way more than I need in each cell, but I don't know how they're going to do. So did I already do that one? Yeah, I did. All right, so that's six cells of the white foxglove. Write that down. I'm gonna put this marker here and I'm just gonna remember that I'm going left to right, back to front. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 is Gonfrina and then I start here and I go one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll put my next marker right there and I'm gonna do eight of the next thing. I'm gonna do these mixed colors foxglove. These were seeds I purchased this year. Okay. I'm gonna put some vermiculite on the top and um, hopefully this will keep away any sort of fungus or algae um, because I'm growing them indoors. I'm more concerned about it. I did put vermiculite on the ones that I did in, this, um, in the winter sowing episode. That's probably less important to do them on the ones that are outside, but the ones that are inside where they're gonna be in household temperatures under lights, they're more likely to heat up and get some fungus growth or algae growth or fungus gnats or something like that. So I'm gonna use the vermiculite. It helps insulate the top so they don't dry out as fast, but also it prevents that algae growth. And this is Espoma organic vermiculite. It happens to be the vermiculite that was available at the nursery when I was there looking. This is the one that's really fine textured, but you could also use the kind that's a little bit bigger grains. Now, both of these seeds were really small, especially the foxglove, so I'm not really too worried about covering them with soil as much as I wanna make sure that the seeds are just protected from drying out. Okay, and then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna touch them all down to make sure that all the seeds are um, touching soil, I mean thoroughly touching soil, so they have the best shot at germination. And you know what, now that I think about it, I think that these gomfrina seeds were big enough that they do need to be covered with some soil in addition, 
to the vermiculite. So I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. But certainly these foxglove seeds, they are so tiny that just pressing them like that and having that layer of vermiculite, that's going to cover them fine. But I will put some, a light covering of soil on the gum for you. And then I'll put more vermiculite. Okay, all right. One thing I forgot. <sighs> I said it was one more thing, but then there was another one more thing. So water, spritz the top, just to soak the soil down around those seeds. Make sure the seeds are really, really moist and are touching that soil. All right, that was really the last step. So now I'm just gonna cover them up and they're gonna be well um, protected from drying out with this. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to do some of these microgreens in this recycled container from the butcher. So uh, this one is one that's about an inch deep um, so that is the deepest one that I have of this style. So I'm going to go ahead and put the microgreens in here. It has a little bit of a crack, but I'm not too worried about it. We're just recycling things around here. So, you know, waste not, want not. I'm going to fill up my container with good moistened soil. Okay, so I have, um, let's see, I have this, um, Microgreens Mild Mix. This is a mixture of brassicas. So there's, uh, let's see if I can tell you what's inside. Yeah, it doesn't exactly, exactly say which greens are in here, but it's a mixture of brassicas. So um, you just plant these really thinly and then they come up and then you trim them off. Kind of like bean sprouts, but they are a different kind of way to have greens in your diet. So this, this particular package is the coated seeds so each seed is coated in a, a little um, ball of, um, oh, let's see, the coating is made of clay, lime, and perlite, and is a little bit colored so that you can see it. Um, so I've got 150 seeds in this packet, um, which, you know, as it goes for a microgreen planting, that's actually not very many, but you just do them really thickly. So actually, I think I could probably have stood to have a little bit more in here, but this is what I have, so I'm just going to do it that way. Just gently cover them with a little bit of soil, not too deeply. Okay, now I can't see any of them peeking through. Maybe there's one right there. Okay, all right, that's going to be good enough. All right, vermiculite. All right, that's done. Uh, so now I'm going to plant some just lettuce greens on this other side. This is an all season romaine blend. I bought it last year. Um, so these seeds are one year old. And I'm gonna use these as microgreens as well. So I'm gonna also thickly plant these. Okay, so on the left side, I have um, this microgreens mild mix, which is brassica based. And on the right, I have this lettuce based mix. I'm going to label these real quick, but I think my labels are outside. All right, so I bought a bunch of new labels this year, but they're really too big. And I have these old ones from last year, but they're really too big too. They're really too big too. Um, and then I have these that I used last year and I like to try to reuse them because I like multi-purpose use of plastic things in the garden. So I'm actually gonna use these old ones and I'm gonna just cut them off because they're too tall anyway. And then I'm gonna um, use the bottom of the label for in here. All right, so, but basically you just need a dome so that you can keep the moisture in. And I left it a little bit long so I could tuck that under. Like that and I might actually go ahead and tape down these sides and stuff and you only leave this on here until they start to germinate and then as soon as they germinate you take it off so it's okay if it's actually really close to the soil um, you only care about it uh, right up until the leaves pop out I forgot to mention one more type type of container that I have and these are leftover market packs that I bought plants in last year I saved the container they have 12 pretty large cells in them. I'd say each of them is two by three by four inches deep. So these are really nice sized. 
I'm gonna go ahead and start my snapdragons in these because as I understand it, I'm no expert, but I, I've learned that snapdragons prefer to have really deep roots. And in fact, they sell a product called a root trainer that you can get to grow your snaps in that make them like six or eight inches deep, but the, uh, the diameter of a regular cell. But um, these are the deepest ones that I had that weren't like big pots. And so I'm gonna start my snapdragons in here and hopefully their roots will um, grow down toward these, uh, toward the bottom, and uh, that'll be successful. I um, forgot to bring up a water tray to hold these in from the garage, so I'm just using a cookie sheet for now, but I'm certainly not going to be using that for the long term because this is what we cook in a lot. So, But I'm just gonna use this to catch the water after I plant. Now I've got these covered up and I will keep the, um, keep the cling film on until they germinate. As soon as I see the germination happening, I'm going to take this off and we'll just keep them moist and either under lights or up next to a bright window. I'm going to try to get some lights set up. I don't know how that's going to go, but we'll see. What I'm gonna do with all of these is I will um, find some space in a southern window. I have that whole room that's full of southern windows. So I just need to get something to set things on in there. Um, and I'll have them in there. I'll check on them and make sure that they're stayed moist, but I think they will stay moist because the, the soil was pre-moistened and they all are covered with either a dome or the plastic. Um, but I'll just make sure, and um, and then as soon as I see germination coming up, I'll take that off, and then it'll be uh, keeping them watered. In the meantime, while they're germinating, I'm going to see if I can hook up some sort of grow light system. Now, I am not interested in going out and spending a whole lot of money, although I did purchase one small kit, but it was too pricey for me to want to do more of that style. Um, I have a basement full of fluorescent ceiling fixtures, just the cheap shop light kind. So I'm thinking I'm gonna pilfer one or two of those and set myself up a shop light kind of system with fluorescent lighting and see if I can make that work over the next few days. So if I do, I'll show you on here and, um, and we'll come up with something. I do wanna try doing some just in the window, but I have done that in the past and I know they do get really leggy if you do that, especially if you do it so early in the winter like I am now. Now, if you were doing that in like March or April, closer to when you could start putting things outside, that might work a little bit better. Put them in the window until they germinate and then get them outside. That might work later. But in the in the kind of the really cold dead of winter like it is right now, I really do need to be having lights, I think. So I'm gonna work on that project. I'm gonna see what I can scrounge up um, from what I already have in my house. And uh, I'll check back in with you about that. So I'm just gonna set these into the window and um, hopefully they'll be growing. So that's my seed starting adventure for today, Valentine's Day 2021. And I hope that you're having fun where you are too. And put down in the comments down below what you're starting. Are you starting seeds indoors right now? If so, what is it? Vegetables? I'm not doing much vegetables. I did some greens, but that's about it. Um, are you doing um, your tomatoes and peppers yet? Or are you focusing on your annual flowers or maybe some perennials? What do you got going in your seed starting situations where you are? Also, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet and hit like on this post if you liked what you saw. Um, and uh, come on back and join me for more at-home gardening. It's just me, I'm just Jenny, I'm just showing you what I'm doing and maybe we could all learn together and we can have conversations and you know, just kind of learn from each other and be friends in the gardening world. So uh, leave comments down below, engage with me that way, hit like, hit subscribe, that'd be great. Check me out on Facebook and also on Instagram. Not incredibly active over there, but uh, you know, sometimes I put up uh, photographs or you know, just little updates that aren't worthy of a whole video. So, um, so anyway, that's my seed starting adventure for today. I'll probably be doing a lot more over the coming spring. Um, and uh, so 
you know, everybody's doing seed starting right now, so I'm not really all that unique, but you know, there's only one Jenny in Baltimore at Harmony Hills Home and Garden. So just like there's only one you. So whatever you're doing, know that it's important too, and that we all are contributing to a greener world, a happier world with more flowers, more food, more fun. So that was a rambling close, but anyway, I hope you got the gist of it. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you learned something or at least enjoyed what you saw and uh, check back with me in the next video and I hope to see you again soon.